you very much. All right. Um, as I mentioned already, the, uh, I'll speak about concrete mix design first, concrete components, joints in concrete, and then uh, preparation of slabs for coating. Concrete. It is the second most consumed product in the world next to water. Um, people tend to underestimate how much concrete we use. We see it all around us, but we never really quantify how much, how much is out there and how important it is to what we do every day. Concrete is basically a mixture of Portland cement, aggregate, and water. It, uh, mixed designs do vary based on desired property of the finished slabs, so you will get a wide variety of concrete mixed designs when you start looking at, at mixed designs, but still taking it back, very simple composition when all comes down to it. The uh, Back at the beginning, the, uh, the initial concrete designs, and you see this on old rail bridge plans that are still in existence at this point, they would call it the 3 two, one mix. It was as simple as that. Three shovelfuls of gravel, two shovelfuls of sand, one shovelful of cement, and however much water it took to make it work. At this point, it's a little bit more complicated. You still have the Portland cement, so there's your one shovelful of cement. You do have supplementary cementitious material, which was not utilized at the beginning. Um, water, aggregate, and in this day and age, we talk a lot about admixtures and what admixtures bring to the table. Admixtures can be chemical or mineral in composition. The, uh, as a clarification, a lot of people talk about concrete and they refer to it as cement. I'm married to a structural engineer. There is no faster way to make him upset than to refer to concrete as cement. Cement is not concrete, it is simply a binder that is utilized to hold the whole thing together. The word cement itself traces back to Roman times. Um, opus cementitium was used originally to describe a, a concrete-like masonry that's used all over in a Roman building. And it was initially composed of crushed rock and burnt lime and held it together as a binder. Eventually, the Romans got very smart, and they realized that they could add volcanic ash and pulverized brick, and with that, they could obtain hydraulic properties, which made it last for pretty much forever. If you've been to Rome and you've seen some of the, uh, the ruins throughout Italy, you'll find some concrete there or mosaics that are set in, set in cement, set in concrete, that are very much today as they were when they put them down originally. It certainly stood the test of time. There are two types of cement. We have non-hydraulic cement. Uh, non-hydraulic cements have to be kept dry in order to retain their strength. When you see um, cements in the market that are based on gypsum or plaster, those are, are typically non-hydraulic cements. Hydraulic cement needs water um, in order to harden. It hardens due to a hydration process. What I'll be speaking about today is hydraulic cement. Hydration. Is, is what we would typically refer to as cement cure. So when we talk about cement hardening, curing, um, all of that is due to hydration. Cement cures when it's mixed with water, which causes a series of chemical reactions and, and ultimately hydrates the slab and brings its strength. The water in the mixture turns the concrete paste into a gel. That gel eventually turns into a solid. During that time, the concrete itself is not drying. So many times we refer to the concrete drying. It's really not drying. It is curing as that chem chemical reaction slowly takes those gel particles, turns them into a solid. Um, in that gelling reaction, as you see these difficult, different crystal structures are up here, the hydration gelling process, and then as it dries, it actually creates crystalline structure, and crystalline structure creates the matrix that gives concrete strength. The yeah, hydration of cement is an exothermic chemical reaction. Um, what that tells us is that the reaction itself does release heat, um, but also the release of heat with concrete coupled with warm conditions or, or hot conditions will cause the cement to cure faster. The reactions will happen much quicker. But that said, you may think that you want to raise the temperature and dry out the area in order to cause the concrete to dry or to cure faster but that really does something that you don't want to happen with concrete. You really need to maintain a high moisture concrete in the slab and the conditions in order to make sure that, that the concrete does develop high ultimate strength. 
a lot of times we talk about cure time and the effect of different things on cure time. Many of us in the flooring industry see that cure time of concrete significantly affects our ability to stick to a schedule or move, move a project forward. Cure time will vary significantly depending on both the concrete mixture or the mixed design and the environmental condi conditions. Um, when you initially pour a slab and you finish the slab, you can get sufficient hardening in as little as 20 minutes where you could put foot traffic on that slab. So we may look at that and say, wow, that, that concrete cured pretty quickly and it's hardened quickly. That doesn't mean it's really cured. It's not ready to go. Um, it can typically be put into general service within 24 hours to a week, but it does take significantly longer to get yourself to full cure. Um, the typical rule of thumb with a standard, well-designed concrete mix is that you will get one inch of concrete cure per month, again, with a well-designed concrete mix, but also with optimal drying conditions. So if you've got a six inch slab, the assumption would be it takes six months for it to fully cure. If it's a three inch slab or a four inch slab, three or four months. Portland cement is the first component in concrete and arguably the most important. Portland itself is not a brand name. I think many of us refer to Portland cement and assume that there's some gentleman named Portland out there that invented Portland cement or found it and it's a brand name and that guy's really got a corner on the market. The fact of the matter is it's not. Um, it was named Portland by the inventor, Joseph Aspiden, who believed when he was first looking at it that the color significantly resembled the limestone on the, uh, the cliffs of the island of Portland in the British Channel. 